Hi, this is Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop, and today we're going to be talking all about speakers and choosing the right size speaker for your room. We're going to be talking about when bigger isn't better and when sometimes it is. Is it possible for a speaker to be too big for the room you're in? Maybe, maybe not. We'll go over some of the technical considerations there that'll help you decide whether you should be getting a larger speaker for your space or a smaller speaker. This one's free to the public, like all the MixCon videos. Thanks to our sponsors, we've got free master classes and workshops coming at you every week during MixCon. And this one is sponsored by one of my favorite speaker brands, Adam Audio. The reason why I wanted to do this one with Adam and show you a bunch of Adam speakers is because they've been one of my favorite brands for decades. This is one speaker out of my personal pair of Adam A5Xs that I got years and years ago, and I mixed a ton of records on this thing. And I was surprised at just how much I loved mixing on this smaller monitor. It's a five inch woofer. And at that time I was looking at seven inches and eight inches, and I was worried that a five incher would just be too small, but this thing was amazing. It gave me useful information about what was happening down to around 50 Hertz. And it was an ideal size for my room. Even though I use larger speakers now, I think there's a lot of people who can still benefit from smaller speakers in their rooms rather than larger speakers. The newer version of that Atom speaker is the Atom A4V, which I've got here. It's got even a slightly smaller driver, but it goes just about as deep as the old Atom A5X. This A4V will still give you useful information down in the 50 hertz range. Really remarkable for a speaker its size. But some of you want to go even deeper than 50 hertz, and there are much bigger speakers that can do that. Or you might want to go with a smaller speaker like this with a subwoofer, and we'll talk about some considerations there in just a minute. On the larger end of things would be something like this Atom A7V, and this one is tiring just to hold up here in front of you. It weighs significantly more. It might be a little bit more awkward to place in your room if you're in a really small room, but it does go down even deeper still. It's gonna give you some really useful information down in the 40 hertz range. But with that said, if you went with the smaller atoms and added a subwoofer, they'll give you useful information well below 40 hertz as well. So which is the better way to go and why? Those are the kinds of questions I'm looking to answer with you today. Ultimately, I think your choice in speakers will come down to three main categories of reasons. One is going to be cost and cost considerations. All things being equal, a larger speaker in the same series of the same quality is likely to cost more than a smaller speaker in the same series of the same quality. Are there times where you might want a higher quality speaker that's a little bit smaller? And are there times where you might want a bigger speaker and it doesn't matter if you're making small sacrifices here and there about other parts of the build? We'll talk a little bit about that. The second major category of reasons here are just practicality and convenience. It's easier to put smaller speakers in a smaller room, but just how small do the speakers need to be and just how small does your room have to be before you decide that you should get smaller speakers and how big does your room have to be before you decide that you might want to get larger speakers? I'll give you some general ideas around that. But the third category of reasons here are what we might call performance reasons. Are there scenarios in which smaller speakers will actually perform better than larger speakers, depending on the size and shape of the space that you're in? And are there situations where bigger speakers are definitely going to give you performance benefits? That's a great set of questions. There are some scientific realities there and some myths as well, and we can go through those together. All right, first off, just talking about the cost considerations. One of the biggest things to think about here, as mentioned, is do you want to go for a smaller speaker that's a higher quality build instead of a larger speaker that might be a less expensive build? For example, in the Atom family, you could go for the Atom T8V monitors, some of the best large affordable monitors out there. These are remarkably inexpensive for just how good they are. And you could even get a subwoofer with these. Those speakers by themselves will go down to about 33 hertz. And with a sub, I mean, they can shake the earth under you. Or for a little bit more, instead of those eight inch behemoths, you could get the Atom A4Vs. Why would you want to spend a little bit more on a smaller speaker? Well, more expensive speakers generally have better drivers in them. They might have better waveguides, better speaker box designs, better cabinet materials, and all of those can make a difference. 
Some of the places you might hear these improvements could be in things like frequency response, but often in things like transient response. And sometimes a higher quality, smaller driver will give you more accurate mid-range and better mid-range detail and better transient response than a less expensive, larger speaker design. So if you really care about hearing the most important frequencies really well, there's a chance that going with a slightly more expensive, smaller speaker could benefit you over going with a less expensive series of larger speaker. That said, if the goal is to get some really nice big speakers for a big room and do it inexpensively and go really deep, the less expensive, larger speakers might check the boxes you're looking to check. And if you want some even better mid-range detail, maybe you're getting a secondary set of some cube monitors or a set of headphones that you really trust to help complement some of your decision making there. That said, you can also go with a smaller speaker plus a sub. So one of the possibilities here is you could get a nice large set of speakers or you can get a nice small set of speakers with a sub. And depending on your preferences, you might be one of those kinds of people who prefer the sound of mixing on a smaller set of speakers with a sub rather than a larger set of speakers that goes deeper. One of the potential benefits going the route of a smaller speaker with the sub is that adding on a sub turns a two-way speaker design, that's a speaker with a woofer and a tweeter, into a three-way speaker design. Once you add on a subwoofer, all of a sudden, the low-frequency woofer turns into basically a mid-frequency driver. And a little four-inch speaker like this is great at moving mid-frequencies. Some of my favorite speakers are three-way speaker designs because they have a dedicated mid-frequency driver. And I just get even more detail and accuracy out of my mid-range, I feel, sometimes in three-way designs relative to two-way designs. So depending on your taste, sometimes a smaller two-way speaker with a sub might suit you better than a larger three-way speaker. That said, if you're the kind of person who prefers working without a sub, then erring towards larger speakers might be a better way to go for you. That is, if your room and your listening distances can handle it. And it's not that big of a deal. I'll give you a few considerations to think about around that. But after this prime idea of cost savings, smaller speakers are generally less expensive than larger speakers, is the idea of convenience and ease of placement. Because there are going to be a lot of scenarios where you can fit smaller speakers where a larger speaker just won't make sense. A speaker like this A4V is large enough that you could put it on speaker stands behind your desk, behind your computer, and listen to them at a reasonably long distance. But they're also small enough that this speaker, the A4V, could go on your desk potentially or on a meter bridge, depending on the size of desk that you're working with there. Meanwhile, a larger speaker like this Atom A7V, I don't think you're putting this one on your desk and you'd have to have a pretty big mixing console to put it on your meter bridge. It might be a little large for some applications. That said, if you're going to be listening from considerable distances, sometimes larger speakers just seem to fit the room better. But this ties into our next idea, which is, are there potential performance benefits to a smaller speaker or a larger speaker that you should consider? And the first one I want to talk about is listening distances. In general, larger speakers, you need to be slightly further away from them to get them to perform optimally. You don't have to be crazy far away from a speaker like this, as long as you're listening, say, three feet or further away, most large speakers like this one are going to be just fine. But if you're listening at distances more like two feet or maybe a little bit less than that, there's a chance that a smaller speaker actually might perform a little bit better in those situations. This is in part because the focal point of the speaker, usually a place kind of between the woofer and the tweeter, doesn't really come together until you start listening from slightly further distances. If you have a speaker like this and you put it right up to your ear like it's a set of headphones, not really ideal. The sound isn't going to fully develop and you won't get great phase coherence between the tweeter and the woofer below a certain distance. But the minimum distances for most speakers, it's not that far. A general rule of thumb that I've heard is that you want to be about four times further away from the speaker than the speaker is wide. So on a speaker with a four inch driver like this one, they could perform well, maybe at distances as short as a foot and a half. So if you're going to be two feet, a foot and a half away from a speaker, a smaller speaker like this might be a better way to go. If you're going to be less than a foot and a half away from them, maybe headphones are a better way to go. 
If you're going for larger speakers, seven inches or eight inches, those might be optimal at distances greater than two feet or maybe three feet. So if you're going to be in really close proximity to your speakers, think about going for smaller designs rather than larger ones. But what about this idea of low frequency performance? Is it possible for a speaker to put out frequencies that are too low for your room to handle? The answer I'm going to give you here is yes and no. Technically, kind of no. Even if you're in a really small room, assuming it's built out of normal materials that we're used to and home construction, you can't really put out frequencies that are too low for that room to reproduce at all. However, with that said, in my experience, most smaller rooms have even less accurate low end in practice than larger rooms and take even more acoustic treatment to get some of the low frequency issues resolved. Realistically, any room that wasn't purpose designed to be a recording studio, if left untreated, is going to have some significant issues below 200 hertz. Once you start acoustically treating your space, you can improve that situation considerably. But I have found that a lot of the smallest rooms, even when treated considerably, can still have significant low-end problems, especially below 50 hertz or so. So if you have speakers that can already get down to 50 or 60 hertz, are you really getting tremendous extra benefit out of your room by having speakers that go any deeper than that? That's a question you're going to have to answer for yourself. If you have a lot of problems in the low frequencies in your space, sometimes adding even more sub-information in there is just going to confuse you even more than help you. It's not exactly that your room can't handle it or can't reproduce those low frequencies or the speakers are too big. This is much more a function of how well your room is treated rather than just the size of the room itself. That said, those two variables aren't completely independent. And oftentimes you're going to have an even harder time getting a smaller room to speak really well in the lower frequencies. So for that reason, I'm kind of biased in favor of smaller speakers for smaller rooms. Although it would be possible for you to have a reasonably small room that could handle a fairly large speaker. Now, there's one last consideration I'd like to give you, and that is the difference between near-field monitors, like those over my right shoulder, and mid-field monitors, like the A77s over my left shoulder. Near-field monitors are really designed to be listened to by one person in the sweet spot at relatively close distances, whereas mid-field designs are made to be listened to potentially a little bit further away and to possibly give a wide enough sweet spot and enough coverage to cover more than one listener. So if you're going to be really close to your speakers, a near-field design is generally going to be better. But if you're going to be further from your speakers and there's more than one person making creative decisions on what you're listening to, mid-field speakers could be a way to go. And this is another time to think about differences in driver size. You might, in some cases, be better off with a small driver midfield design like the Atom A44s if those speakers are going to be a little bit further away and meant to cover more than one listener. And by going with the smaller drivers, you might be able to afford to add a sub onto that system. So if you need a midfield design and you want them to go deep, you could get a smaller driver speaker with a sub, and that might treat you better than just getting a single larger drive near field monitor. On the other hand, listening to a set of midfield monitors up close, treating them like near fields, might not be ideal for you. So that's a final consideration to think about. And let me know in the comments down below, what size speakers are you on currently? Have you upgraded from larger speakers to a nicer quality, smaller speaker? Tell us about that experience. Or have you upgraded from smaller speakers to larger speakers? I'd love to hear about that as well. I read all of your comments and I think they help give an additional perspective to others who might be checking out this video. If you like this video, please hit like. If you're new here, hit subscribe. And if you want to win thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of free gear, check out the MixCon Mega Giveaway. The link is down in the description and the comments below. Big thanks again to Adam Audio for making MixCon possible and for sending me all these awesome speakers to try out. And big thanks to you for hanging out with me. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. See you next time.